Welcome to today's episode of the Simply Financial Podcast. Thanks for joining me today. I'm your host, Christopher Calandra, and I want to increase your financial IQ with a look at the state of the mortgage market in the U.S. today. Rising interest rates over the last 18, 24 months have created a lot of change in the United States across a wide spectrum of areas of the economy and is having an impact changing consumer behavior all over the place. But I want to focus on the home market for a moment. Uh, There's lots of change in the commercial real estate market as well, but I'll save that for another day. So to begin with, uh, depending on the source, uh, most estimates are that between 37 and 40% of homes in the U.S. are owned outright, free and clear, no mortgage. I find that to be good news. This means that probably these folks that don't have a mortgage on their home are probably financial secure, uh, financially secure. It probably means that they don't have much if other debt. Usually a mortgage is the last debt that's paid off. Uh, That's a general statement. I'm sure there's exceptions. But I think that's really encouraging. Even more so is if you uh, leave out homeowners over 65, you would expect that people over 65 often will not have mortgages. They've been paying mortgages for longer in their homes longer, tend to be a little wealthier. But even if you exclude those individuals over 65, homeowners over 65, about 26 percent of homes owned by people under 65 are paid off. Again, I find that very, very encouraging. When we look at the state of the mortgage market, that means that there's about 60% of the homes that do have a mortgage. I'm assuming 40%, the high end, have it paid off. Uh, 92% of those with a mortgage have a rate below 6%. 80%, and I think this is the key number, 80% have mortgages below 5%. And 62%, this is a big number, 62% of homeowners have a mortgage rate below 4%. This means that lots of Americans have attractive, long-term, usually fixed debt on an asset that has done well over the very long term. Homes have done value-wise very well over a very long period of time in the United States. Plus, they've done exceptionally well over the last few years, starting in 2020. So here's the thing about where we are today. I looked at bankrate.com. As of today, as of this recording, uh, the average 30-year mortgage in the U.S. today is 7.53%. If 92% of Americans have a mortgage below 6%, and 80% have a rate below 5%, that 7.53% average 30-year mortgage seems like a really high rate. It's shockingly high, especially because just a few short years ago, we were dealing with rates that were in the twos or threes. We've come a long way in a really short period of time. By the way, again, bankrate.com, says that the average 15-year mortgage rate is 6.79%, less than 30, of course, but still higher than what most people have for mortgages, if they even have a mortgage. So this is change in and of itself. This rate environment is change, significant change. The era of low mortgage rates is gone. It means that people are going to be unlikely to refinance their homes because the newer rates are higher, maybe a lot higher. So that's another element of change. For a long time, as rates have dropped and or stayed low, people were refinancing at a pretty good clip, either to get a lower rate, Uh, That's idea number one. Idea number two is they would refinance and maybe pay off other debt maybe do home improvements, maybe start a business, and they'd roll the old mortgage in with some new debt, but the rate was about the same. So it was an attractive option for a lot of people. And a lot of Americans took advantage of it over this recent stretch where we had 
historically low interest rates. What we find today is a lot of Americans will be reluctant to sell their homes because they do not want to give up their low rate for a higher one because they got a good deal and to go into a worse deal might not be attractive. And with these higher rates, the amount of home you could buy is less. Your money simply doesn't go as far as it used to because the drag of the interest rate cost is so much higher today than when you were able to get three, four, five percent mortgages. And again, there's a little bit of a shock to the system. It seems like just a short period of time ago, rates were much, much lower. People haven't adjusted to the new reality just yet. So their conditioning isn't really uh, there yet for them, for a lot of people to easily accept a seven, almost 8% mortgage. So this all leads to, this all results in a continued situation where U.S. Uh, inventory of homes for sale is low. Uh, this has been the case for a while now. And even though the landscape's changed, some of the reasons for this low, uh, low inventory have shifted we still are in an environment where there's more buyers than sellers. Part of this is because of something being called the locked in effect. It's what I described before. People either by perception or by reality don't want to get rid of their low rate mortgage and they're locked into their homes and are unlikely to move to upsize their homes, to move to a different area. They feel a little locked in. That's unlikely to change anytime soon, in my opinion. So I think real estate homes now, I'm not talking commercial real estate. I'm not talking apartments, retail, industrial. I'm just talking about uh, residential real estate. I think will continue to hold its value, uh, at least in most locales. I'm sure there are some exceptions. Some cities like, say, San Francisco have significant issues that are not representative of the United States overall. But I think most locales, you'll find that residential real estate is likely to hold its value, might even go up, not as explosive as it did in 2020, 2021, and into 2022, but real estate might do well. You know, low inventory, high demand usually means price increases based on standard economics. And this will continue to make it tough on young first time home buyers. They're dealing with high prices and high mortgage rates. First time home buyers are usually not cash buyers. Again, I'm sure there's exceptions to that rule, but as a general concept, they're going to take mortgages and they have to deal with high home prices compared to a few years ago and much higher mortgage rates than we had to contend with back just a few short years ago. So if the real estate market holds its value, like I think, that will be beneficial for the economy as a whole. Uh, real estate is a key indicator and a sign of health in the economy these days. I think this vision, if I'm correct, will help the economy maybe avoid a recession or if the United States does enter into a recession, might help it stay on the more modest side, a tamer, shorter, milder recession. Uh, that's an optimistic viewpoint, but I think the data in the mortgage, the state of mortgages today, uh, makes this a pretty good forecast and I'm comfortable with it. So I hope, I hope you found this information to be beneficial. Uh, please check out my website, www.elliotwealth.com, where you could find more information about me, the team here at Elliott Wealth Management, how we help our clients plan financially so that they could win with money. And also, I always ask, it's important to me, to subscribe to the podcast and recommend it to a friend. Thanks for joining me on today's episode of the Simply Financial Podcast. I'll be back with you on the next episode very soon. The views expressed are not necessarily the opinion of Sage Point Financial Incorporated and should not be construed directly or indirectly as an offer to buy or sell any securities mentioned herein. 
Investing is subject to risks, including loss of principal invested. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. No strategy can assure a profit nor protect against loss. Please note that individual situations can vary. Therefore, the information should be relied upon when coordinated with individual professional advice. Please note, the information being provided is strictly as a courtesy. When you link to any of the websites provided here, you are leaving this website. We make no representation as to the completeness or accuracy of the information provided at these websites, nor is the company liable for any direct or indirect technical or system issues or any consequences arising out of your access to your use of third-party technologies websites, information, and programs made available through this website. When you access one of these websites, you are leaving our website and assume total responsibility and risk for your use of the websites you are linking to. Securities and advisory services are offered through SagePoint Financial Incorporated, member FINRA SIPC, insurance services offered through Elliott Wealth Management, LLC, not affiliated with SagePoint Financial.